through March 6th. Call 352-236-2274 or buy online at ocalacivictheater.com. Sounds like a somber kind of a play, doesn't it? Sounds like something I might like. I think I, I like. It sounds like Vita, right? A little bit. The music in the background didn't that sound like Vita to you? Oh, it did. I thought so. All right. Uh, my, my mother and I are going Thursday night. We have season tickets. What's so. it called? Blood Brothers. Or Blood Brothers at Blood. the Ocala Civic Theater. Just yeah. sound, sounds pretty. Yeah. Something. My mom buys season tickets every year. So. All right. Speaking of every every presidential campaign, we talk about delegates and caucuses and primaries, and uh, we become confused again because we. Our brain can't handle things that last. That have to take four years. Mm -hmm. Uh, The key to winning the presidential nomination is not winning Iowa or New Hampshire or or any of them. It is uh, winning delegates. So how do the primaries and the caucus outcomes translate into delegates? And and I don't even want to begin to pretend to be the guy who seems to know. I have it written down for me. (laughs) (laughs) But we've used the same uh, the same kind of uh, educational material in the past. Uh, so before we can talk about delegate math, uh, we have to ask how many delegates, uh, uh, how many candidates wins, I mean, how many delegates a candidate wins depends on how many candidates there are. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, and it, it depends on two things, the, uh, the calendar and winnowing. Winnowing, okay. whatever that means. Winnowing, I'm learning. Today. Winnowing is dis- defined as removing the, sh- the shaft from the grain, if that helps. Oh, okay. With only two, right. ca- here's a better way that to helps. understand it. With only two candidates, as this is the case right now with Hillary and uh, Bernie Sanders, mm-hmm. it's easier to get the nomination more quickly compared to the Republican case right now with uh, multiple candidates. This is why winnowing matters. Mm-hmm. The more quickly the field is winnowed or cut down, I guess, the sooner the eventual winner can accumulate a majority of the delegates. This Mm -hmm. is why it matters how long each of the remaining Republican candidates can compete. Yeah. If the field is winnowed, and as you know, it winnowed a little bit this past weekend when Jeb Bush backed out, um, it goes fairly quickly. If the field plateaus at three or four candidates, we could be in for a long primary season. It also has to do with the calendar. And uh, for a long time, states wanted um, to have more influence in the elections, so they moved their primaries earlier in the year. You might remember Florida did that. Mm -hmm. In the year 2000 and 2008, the calendars fit that description. Front-loaded calendars tend to be an advantage for candidates with more resources and name recognition. People go to the primaries and the caucuses and they oh, I know that name, and let me me vote for it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, delegates would be chosen based on those votes. Uh, Since 2008, though, um, national party rules have changed, and it requires every state except Iowa, Nevada, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. Sound familiar? Yes, it does. Those are the ones we've had so far. Well, Nevada's coming up. They hold their contests after February, everyone except for those four. Mm -hmm. This has forced most states to schedule their primaries in March or later. Uh, There was a lot of change in the party's primary calendar from 2012 to 2016. The most important change was that Arkansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Texas moved their primaries earlier into March. In Florida, remember, we had the we had like one of the first primaries, and then we moved it. Yeah. So now ours is ours is also in March. Yep, and it's too late now to sign up at the supervisor of elections. And if you believe that the South is is a better uh, field for Republicans, then um, then the South is more important. But I don't know that that's necessarily the truth. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and, and there might have to. There might be some ethnic divide also because of the the way the country is is built. Who knows? Not yeah. built, but the way we where we live. Uh, anyway, so counting delegates means answering two questions. How many delegates does each state get? So mm-hmm. Let's look at this. The number of delegates depends on two things. Population and, listen to this, loyalty to the party. Okay. For Republicans, each state receives three delegates for each congressional district. Okay. Okay. Uh, and five delegates for each senator. Okay. So, which would mean ten delegates for every state, right? And three gal- three delegates for every congressman. Okay. Yes. There are also a three automatic party delegates and bonuses based on whether the state voted for the Republican nominee in a previous presidential election, 
or has a Republican governor, as we do. Yes. Okay. Uh, Republican senators or Republican-controlled state legislative chambers. That is the partisan loyalty component. So... Are you confused yet? Okay. This is, I've got to delve, delve, delve. Are you confused yet? Okay, but that's that's what it says. The 10 base delegates and any bonus delegates are considered at large delegates. These delegates are allocated based on the statewide results in the primary or the caucus, depending on what you're calling it. Okay. The congressional district delegates can be allocated based on the statewide vote or on the results in the congressional districts. Plural. Okay. Plural. Confused? All right. For Democrats, it works similarly, except that congressional districts with more Democrats actually do get more delegates. Oh, okay. Uh, so let me let me push forward a little bit. The Democrats have a proportional system. The candidates get delegates in proportion to their vote share in the state's primary or caucus. Uh, and it gets, of course, more complicated than that. No wonder we're all confused. The first exactly. key detail is nobody <laughs> is using a, a strict proportional rule. The Democrats require that candidates get at least 15% of the vote to win any delegates. The Republican National Committee does not require that states use a threshold, but it does allow them to get a threshold uh, as high as 20%. Oh, okay. Iowa has no threshold, which is why so many candidates won delegates coming out of Iowa this past week or so ago. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also some rules that the candidates don't meet the threshold, um, but let's not go there uh, just for the sake of time. And then there's also the winner-takes-all systems. Uh, it's not actually the winner-takes-all, as you probably know. The myth goes, there's a myth about this, it goes that, like this, the Republican process was winner-takes-all. Okay. Then in 2012, the states that held primaries through March 31st were proportional, and everything after that was winner take all. Now in 2016, it's the same, except proportionally, when the proportionality window closes March 15th instead of March 31st. Okay. So the myth ignores the proportional systems that aren't proportional. Oh. All right. You're, you're, okay. If, Ignores the proportional if, systems that aren't proportional. If you're confused, all right. Let's don't see feel I'm bad. Processing this. Don't feel bad. Mm -hmm. So let me let me try to get to uh, a piece of this that really made a lot of sense. Um, well, it all makes sense, really. It's you really. It does. To, I just have to study it. You have to look at it. And yes. Learn it. Like anything else, you have to. It has to be learned. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, oh, and they're not always bound to a delegate uh, to a candidate either. Um, no candidate gets a majority of delegates, and we head to a contest. If if no candidate gets a majority of delegates, rather, we head to a contested convention. Mm -hmm. So this gets um, at whether a convention delegate is bound to a candidate. That is, they are obligated by the rules to vote for that candidate, or whether they're merely pledged. If you're if you're a delegate, do you have to vote in in the uh, at the convention for the candidate that you? voted to, you yeah, know? Yeah, right. Not necessarily. Democratic rules do not refer to bound delegates. The delegates are seemingly only loosely pledged to a candidate based on the results of the primaries or caucuses. Oh, so well, that's, so that's you, nice you could have some well. delegates that were, you know, pledged mm -hmm. to Bernie Sanders, but then when it comes right down to it, they, they vote for Hillary Clinton. Right. Right. That loose pledge is stronger than it would appear. In some states, candidates handpick delegates and file their names with the state or the party. Any delegates the candidates win come from this list. And so the bond between candidate and delegate is likely to be very strong. Mm -hmm. In general, pledged Democratic delegates are likely to be loyal to their candidate if that candidate is still viable and has not released the delegates to vote for another candidate, which probably doesn't happen often. No. No, once they, they get sucked in there, they're capped. And also there's the superdelegate part of this. That's the, only on the Democrat side, most of whom are party leaders who are unpledged and free to choose a candidate regardless of the results of the primaries or caucuses. Oh, okay. So it's like a game of chess. It is. It is, very much so. But in Republicans, it's different. In the Republican Party, there are bound and pledged delegates, but the vast majority, more than 95% of them, are bound. Mm -hmm. So 95% are... Plus, 95% plus are going to vote for whoever the, the voters said that those delegates should vote for. 
The modest number of pledged delegates are from a small group of states that opted to forego a preference vote at their caucuses or state conventions, for example, North Dakota. Oh, okay. If the Republican convention was contested, those pledged delegates could support whomever they prefer. Mm-hmm. So, but un- unlike the Democrats, Republican candidates do not handpick delegates. This opens up the possibility that some delegates who are bound to a candidate because of the primary or the caucus outcome actually favor another candidate. Oh, okay. Okay. So hopefully everything's above board, and if the candidates get the names of all the delegates, that they don't try to entice them with bribery and stuff to leave it all above board. Uh, On the first ballot or in the handful of states beyond that, bound delegates will have to vote for the candidate they are bound to. Mm -hmm. So on the leaderboard, to use a... A sports term. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good term. It's an appropriate term. I'm sure you know what the leaderboard shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, on the Republican leaderboard anyway, uh, Donald Trump has 67 delegates. Mm-hmm. Now that you know that some of them may be bound and some of them may be pledged and what, the, and what that difference is. Right. So Donald Trump has 67. Uh, Ted Cruz has 11. Oh. And Marco Rubio has 10. Okay. So... Trump has a lot more. Yes, he does. He has a he's, lot more right now. He's in first place. So I'm, I just have to look at it that way. If you're wondering how does this all you know come to be, it gathers as it as it rolls down the hill. Mm-hmm. Exactly. This is pretty cool. I know a lot of that was confusing. It was confusing to me too. I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to post that on Facebook. Okay. That's probably a way. All right, we'll take a little break and be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. The president delivering a statement on Gitmo shortly. This is the same morning as the Pentagon is expected.